Well, it's Ben Holcomb, Associate Professor in Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering at UTS and we're in the Vibration Lab and this video is about relative calibration of accelerometers and as you can see we've got a setup here that includes a laser Doppler vibrometer which is being used as, our, as one of our reference measurements. Um, I have two accelerometers connected in series onto a accelerometer calibrator, handheld accelerometer calibrator, that's this device here. Um, it's a Brulinkier type 4294 calibrator. This device produces a single frequency of vibration at 10 millimeters per second and at 159.2 hertz. That corresponds to a thousand radians per second which means that in acceleration versus velocity versus displacement it becomes a simple matter of dividing by a thousand to get from 10, mil 10 meters per second squared to 10 millimeters per second to 10 microns. These are RMS values. Okay, so the peak is 14.14 meters per second squared, millimeters per second, and micrometers, respectively, in acceleration, velocity, and displacement terms. This is a really helpful device because it allows us to have a, a, a predefined vibration in amplitude and in frequency that we can use to, to compare and contrast the outputs from our accelerometers with to determine their specific calibration. Individual accelerometers, this is a, a, an IEPE accelerometer, comes with a nominal calibration which is nine, 100 millivolts per g. So this accelerometer type, the nominal calibration for this accelerometer and, and other accelerometers of this model are 100 millivolts per G, so it's an AF100 uh, stroke 10, 100 signifying 100 millivolts per G. In this case, because of the amount of piezoelectric material in this particular transducer and the amount of tungsten in the mass that sits on the piezoelectric mater uh, uh, material that's compressed during vibration and is responsible for producing the charge that is amplified into volts to give us a measurement varies and therefore when this comes out of the factory it is or as part of the process of being manufactured in the factory it's, it's given a specific sensitivity an actual sensitivity 99.43 millivolts per g in this case another one of these types of transducers may have a sensitivity of 99.5 millivolts per g 100.01 and so on each transducer, and this is a data sheet for a slightly different transducer, this is for this type of transducer, um, it's a Brule and Kier transducer, type 5433B, nominal sensitivity in this case of 10 millivolts per G, actual sensitivity out of the factory of 9.882 millivolts per G, and as you can see that's been determined at this magical frequency of 159.2 hertz, which is 1000 radians per second, and in this case, 20 meters per second squared RMS, so twice the, uh, the, the acceleration of our accelerometer calibrator. But of course, these devices, if we have twice the acceleration level, we should get twice the output. Half the acceleration level, we should get half the output, and so on. Each transducer has a specific data sheet. Some of these, which are available, will digitize and be available online. And here you can see the frequency response performance over the range from 1 hertz to 10, sorry, 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. And here you can see the typical behavior of a single degree of freedom system, which these transducers essentially are. It's a mass on a spring. It has a resonant frequency of approximately 10, 20, 30, 40, just less than 40 kilohertz. So the usable range is up to 10 kilohertz, where this response is, perf is very close to being flat. And similarly, the phase response over that range is, is intended to be similarly flat. Phase response, as well as amplitude response, is important. Here's a lower frequency version of the, um, that, the, the, the amplitude response over here. So you get a bit more detail in these lower frequencies between 0.1 and 10 hertz. This type of calibration is difficult to do. This is a bit more easy to do with traditional shakers. Broadband excitation, and we measure the voltage against a, a reference transducer.